Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Lightroom Classic and I'm working on a landscape. And I wanted to walk through kind of how I approach it, talk about kind of a kind of a three-step process that I go through in terms of how I'm thinking about my edit to ensure that I kind of achieve the results that I want to achieve. And it really comes down to three different things. That is balancing and paying attention to while I'm editing the light, the detail, and the color. And primarily, light and color are the ones that have the biggest impact on the photo. Detail is important, but I tend to do uh, spend a lot more time on the other two. I'm going to walk through that in this video with this landscape. So it's obviously pretty dark. So the first thing I want to do is bring up that exposure. And I go to about 85 here. Uh, then I want to pull the highlights down a little bit. I mean, it's blown out around the sun. That's okay. I've got a fix for that. And I'm going to lift the shadows 100. And now I've got a, a photo I can see uh, before and after, before and after. But what I want to do is really approach the photo with a few things in mind. And again, it circulates or circles around that theme of light, detail, and color, with light and color being the prominent ones, as I said. Uh, but I also want to look at the photo in terms of areas, uh, areas of interest and areas of, uh, where I want to accentuate things. And what I want to do is I want to color grade the whole thing, but I want to be kind of specific and targeted. I want to apply some light adjustments in various areas. So when you want to customize things, that's where masking comes in, of course. And so I'm going to dive into masking. Now, before I go any further, if you weren't aware, I've got a 17-page editing guide I offer uh, my newsletter subscribers for free. Uh, you can download that at the link below if you want to check that out. But it's 17 pages of tips and tricks and things like that around using Lightroom Classic. And it includes a discussion around light, detail, and color, how and why I approach it the way that I do. So having done that, uh, the first thing I want to do is go get a, uh, a brush mask. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use an object mask. And what I want to do is get the brush component. And I want to isolate these rocks. Uh, and so what I usually do is just kind of paint a pretty good area here so that I can tell Lightroom, give it as much information as possible, and just let it know that I want the mask to cover all of that area. And it usually does a pretty good job. It's not necessarily always perfect. It missed this area here, so I'm just going to click Add, and I'm going to get a brush, and I'll just brush that in. And I'm not sure why it missed that, but I've got it all now, and what I want to do is bring a little attention to that area. And so going back to light, detail, and color, I think those are the three ways that you really get attention uh, to either certain aspects of a photo or to a photo in general. And so the first thing I want to do with this mask is brighten that area a bit because it's a little bit too dark. And so I'm going to lift the exposure so that's a little bit brighter. But I want to play with the temperature and tint. So the temperature is going to go up uh, low 20s. Uh, the sun, this was a sunrise in Madeira. The sun is coming in and hitting the rocks. You can see the golden glow there. So I want to bring that up a little bit, but I also want to give it a little bit of tint. And that's because um, I like the look of the orange, but I tend to like to, um, in my sunrises and sunsets, golden hour, if you will, which is this is kind of, a little bit of all of that. Uh, well, sunrise and golden hour. Uh, but I like to give it a little bit of tint. It's a personal preference. It's just something I like to do. Um, but I, I think it goes well with that golden look. Uh, and while I'm at it, I'm going to add a little bit of clarity as well. Because the rocks, I tend to like to pr uh, provide a little bit of clarity, which is that edge contrast. It gives the appearance of being a little sharper, a little more detailed, light, detail, color. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. A little bit of all three in this uh, particular part of the photo. And so far, I think that looks pretty good. And what I want to do now is jump into my next uh, edit, which is in the sky. And instead of getting a sky mask, I'm actually going to get a linear gradient. And that's because the sky mask, it does a pretty good job of identifying the sky. The thing is, is um, it doesn't always do exactly what I want. I like to fade things. And when you use a sky mask, it doesn't have that gradient edge. A linear gradient does. It lets me kind of control it a little bit better. So I'm going to use a linear gradient in this case. And I'm going to drop the exposure a little bit. Overall, I'm going to take the temperature down. I want this to be a little bit bluer, a little bit cooler overall in the sky. Uh, but I am going to add some of that tint that I added to the rocks because I want to keep things kind of in balance. I'm also going to bump up the saturation here just to give it a little bit more umph. So maybe something about like that. And then I'm going to take the texture and clarity down just slightly. I just like the kind of smoother look in skies. And that's not a big difference. I mean, negative five. But I've had a nice little impact on the sky with this mask. And so that's before and after. So again, light, detail, and color. And that's why I said it's a theme that kind of runs throughout my editing. 
and I'm going to keep going on that theme. And this is going to be a luminance range mask. And this one is going to be focused really heavily on the mid-tone areas. And so I'm going to get this over here. I need to play with this a little bit. So I ended up at about a 25 and a 41 here. I'm looking at my notes, of course, because I can't remember exactly. But something about like that. And then from uh, that's really getting away from the shadows. And now I want to get away from the, the pure highlights. And I'm going to do here like a 53 and I think a 75. So I need to collapse this a little bit more. So get into the 50s here. There's a 53, and then I'm coming into like 75, 76 right there. So as you can see, it, it's really highlighting the water, which is really what I was going for. And that was very heavily uh, in the mid-tones with a nice fade into both of the other two tonal areas, the shadows to the left and the highlights to the right. And what I'm going to do here is slightly lift that exposure. So uh, again, brightening that a little bit. And then I'm going to play a little bit with the saturation, which is going to give me a little bit more color as well. So light and color in this case. I'm not going to play with the detail here. I like the patterns or kind of the, the shape, uh, the texture, if you will, on the waves. I think it looks good. But I wanted to brighten it a little bit and give it a little bit of a saturation boost. So before and after. And now my last mask is really just around the sun. And that's going to be a radial gradient. So I will do this quite often. And I'm going to do something about like that. Uh, so kind of a broad gradient, pretty high feathering. And what I want to do is just lift that exposure a little bit. Uh, as I said, the sun's kind of blown out. Well, not kind of. It is blown out. Uh, and that's okay. Um, I don't really mind so much. And I'm just going to lean into that a little bit. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a saturation, excuse me, a temperature bump. Uh, so warm it up a little bit. And a tiny bit uh, of tint as well. So something about like that. And it's pretty minor. But if you look at the before... In the after, it gives it a little bit of a glow there by kind of leaning into that blown out with that radial mask on the sun. And I think it looks pretty nice overall. So if you look at all of my masks, the before and the after, before and the after, we really shaped the light quite a bit. We also impacted color. Those are the things I was trying to do. So I think that's so far working out pretty well. Now, at this point in the edit, having done a lot of that customization, I like to go down to calibration and start having kind of a play here. And what I'm going to do is, uh, and I got to this through experimentation, so uh, I don't have a, like a formula, although I, did, I do tend to generally start with the blue and play with that first. Uh, green, both of these I ended up going to about a positive 17, so something about like that. And then on the red, I, I went to... A 13 here, so a little bit of saturation boost, but a little bit of a drop in hue. And if you look at the before and after, before and after, it's had a really nice impact on that color. And, and I think it starts to really tie that color together all around the, uh, the photo and has, I think, a really nice overall impact. So I'm pretty happy with what calibration can do. So before and after. Now I do want to customize the color a little bit and for me that's coming into color grading and adding a little bit of a, a little bit more bump in some of the color. So I'm going to go into color grading and in highlights I'm going to drag the saturation to about 11 and I'm going to leave the hue there in the red. So I'm putting a little bit more red into those highlights. In the midtones I usually do the same thing uh, to, as I do um, in the highlights in terms of the color but I tend to go less. But in this uh, case, I actually ended up doing something different. I, I actually go into the hue uh, of a blue. And so I do about a 233 or 234, something like that, and a, a saturation of like 15 or 16. So I'm adding a little bit of blue into the midtones. Like I said, I normally would have gone warmer in the midtones uh, to match what I do in the highlights. But in this case, I think it worked better to cool them off a little bit because I am playing up kind of the the color tension between the warm and cool tones in this photo. And then for shadows, I'm going to go into the blues as well. And that's something I normally do. So that's like a 228 or 230. And I'm going to give it a bump of about a 20 or so. So if you look at this before and after, before, there it is. And then after, it's cooled it off a bit because remember, I cooled off the shadows and the midtones while warming up the highlights. So it's had a, a kind of an interesting effect on the photo, but I like it. It's really calm and peaceful because if you think about it blue is a calmer color and and the warmer orange reds those are more intense kind of active colors more fiery of course uh, so cooling it off a little bit i think gives it a little bit calmer overall kind of feel which i like quite a bit 
But there's one thing that's happened that I kind of don't like, and that is I feel like I've gotten a little bit too much saturation here. The good news is I've already uh, created a mask for those. So I can just go back into that mask. And that was mask number one. And I can just click on that and then come over here to saturation and just pull that down a little bit. Now, I don't want to go too low. I don't want to lose all the color, but I might drop it like, you know, eight or 10, something like that, just to keep it from being uh, over the top because I felt like it was a little bit more saturated than some of the other parts of the photo in terms of the overall balance. So it's the beauty of having created these masks. You can always go back and kind of customize them if you need to. Uh, and then really the last thing is just coming in and putting a vignette on this thing. So I'm going to go, uh, I ended up going about a negative 19 or 20. My midpoint was about uh, high 30s. And my roundness, I tend to like a little bit of a rounder vignette. So I went to mid 50s there. And feathering, I tend to like kind of a high feather on a vignette. So something maybe like that. So if you look at the before and the after, kind of just framing the light, of course, which is what a vignette is doing. But I think overall, I mean, I've come a long way. If you look at the before, of course, that was quite a bit darker. But the after is a huge difference in terms of light, color, and detail. The things that I'm talking about in the video and in my ebook that I refer to. But it gives you the ability to really customize your approach, control the edits with mask, control the colors with the calibration and the color grading. And then also just because of the mass already being in place in those areas, you can customize the colors. It all kind of works together in this kind of symbiotic approach light, detail, and color using masks and, and the different tools, but you can have a huge impact on a photo and come up with something that you really like. And I really like this kind of result. It's got a nice contrasting color, nice pop of warms kind of there along the horizon, coming down the reflection of the sunlight in the water and then hitting those rocks, but then also cool in the water, cool in the sky. I just think it plays off of each other really well with the light and the color and those cool and warm tones that all just comes together. That's how I did this one. Those are some tips to help you get the most out of your editing experience in Lightroom and with uh, landscapes. And so hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Check out my ebook if you're interested. And I'll be back soon, my friends. Hope you're doing well. You guys take care of yourselves. And until next time, adios.